this distinguished panel, what suggestions, if any, do you have to be able to help save us and to exonerate our good friend, Lyndon H. LaRouche, Jr.? Uh, so therefore, I'm committed to the idea that it is possible in a short amount of time to create a breakthrough on the recognition of Mr. LaRouche in the United States, and that perhaps the most important thing we can do, in addition to fighting for his exoneration itself, is to recruit people to this vision that he developed, which includes uh, taking the people of the, the post-industrial cities of the United States, taking the people of uh, the, the poor areas of our nation and giving them a means to contribute to the future. Uh, this is how we're going to give people a deeper identity and get them out of a feeling of nihilism and despair, which is clearly inundating the country. Throughout his life, Lyndon LaRouche and his movement, which we are part of, defended the idea of creating a youth movement that studies the most profound ideas that humanity has produced. These profound ideas represent the creation of new institutions. LaRouche always said that if you want to educate a president and transform a society, you should create a youth movement. And that is what we have done. Fortunately, there is a plan. Existe un plan, un plan inspirado en el profundo pensamiento de Lyndon LaRouche. A plan inspired in the profound thinking of Lyndon LaRouche, which essentially is an educational for fighting against the problems caused by the sick ambitions of the Wall Street and City of London circles. That plan requires the greatest possible number of youth with their dreams and hopes in order to make a better world in which to live and not merely survive. Ladies and gentlemen of the world, fellow citizens, allow me to greet you in the famous Swahili greeting, Jambo, which simply means hello. My name is Franklin Mireri from Kenya, representing the ULIT program. We are cognizant of the wonderful work that is being done by the Schiller Institute in advocating for and mobilizing governments to respond definitively to the current crisis, especially through the efforts of impassioned youth across the world who are committed to taking responsibility of persuading their governments into action. I was lucky enough to be born to a couple of hardworking parents that had the privilege to offer me an education that could help me succeed. I want this opportunity to become a right. The children of my country, of my continent, of the entire planet deserve this right. We live in a paradoxical reality between a youth that is sabotaged by our educational system and this enormous potential young people have coupled with the will to act and in an awareness of the battles to come. It is our duty to provide them with the necessary tools and new job opportunities will naturally follow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, it's been wonderful hearing from the from fellow panelists and uh, even from Senator Mitchell and how passionate uh, he is about uh, the issue of exonerating uh, Lyndon LaRouche. And I think while many people outside of the United States may not have heard of Lyndon LaRouche, personally, I first heard about him this year when I started even taking the economics classes being offered by the Schiller Institute. While many people may not have heard about him, what I know resonates across the world is what he stood for. For example, the way the financial systems are currently skewed against developing countries. So that's just one aspect that as we even seek, as we even sign the petition, let us not forget the importance of global solidarity towards that cause. So you may never know, just the more people get to hear the wonderful work that he did, the more gradual pressure might be put on any administration, it may be this administration or the coming one, but ultimately what he stood for was greater than just in the United States. That's my submission. Thank you. We all die. Everyone is going to die. Mortal life of everyone will come to an end. 
So you've got a mortal life, what are you going to do with it? How long it is is not the most important thing. It's what you go out of this life leaving behind. And what you leave behind. You leave behind younger people. You leave behind successive generations of younger people. You leave behind what you transmit to them, what you contribute to their development, to the circumstances of their work and life, to the conditions of society, to coming generations. Now, we would not be here without the man you just listened to, namely my late husband, Lyndon LaRouche, who, you know, was really the most spectacular, knowledgeable. He knew just about everything. But, you know, he ran eight times for president. He was known throughout the world. We had many leaders in India, in Mexico, in African countries who all expressed one thing, namely that <clears throat> he was about the only American they could trust. And he had developed a unique method of scientific knowledge, of forecasting. He predicted every single aspect of the situation in which we find ourselves. He talked about a pandemic. He talked about the systemic collapse of the financial system when it was absolutely not apparent uh, because everything supposedly went well. <clears throat> but if people would have listened to him, we would not be in the situation we are now. He had an incredible vision of where mankind should be, which is expressed in a beautiful movie he made, Woman on Mars. It's expressed in his writings, The Earth's Next 50 Years, which you know were all extremely visionary ideas where mankind should be. But I want to emphasize one quality which I think extincts him from all other people because he had the most unbelievable passion for mankind. And since it's now not so fashionable that you know young people should have passion for mankind, I would like to encourage you to take that specific aspect, the agape of Linda LaRouche, because if we are going to save civilization and you are going to save civilization because it's your future, I think you need exactly that incredible love for humanity. And then there is no problem which is unsurmountable. And that's really what I wanted to tell you. Having the temerity to put on this panel, uh, this conference, and certainly uh, to Lynn, my longtime friend too, uh, then giving recognition to his contribution and his foresight and his perspective as far as even today is concerned. I have been active for quite a while with the Schiller Institute. Uh, in fact, we dealt with the, the um, Operation Fruit Mention and the human rights abuse concern in London. And the Operation Fruit Mention, of course, was targeted at the African American elected official. We made mass bring that to a standstill or a halt. And consequently, uh, we don't know what, if anything, Lynn paid the price for, for he served time for nothing. He was abused. Former Attorney General Ramsey Clark said that it was the most chronic case of abuse of the so-called system of justice that he had ever seen. And this man was at, in the Attorney General's office, or in the cabinet office. Consequently, came out in support of Lynn. We all did. I'm happy to know that there are so many young people who are now participating in this in this saga. Got a lot of work to do. We always have to remember this. 
to be able to get the justice that Lynn deserves and the exoneration, we're going to have to press people into the service. Thank you.